So many of the brightest stars of the constellation Orion and its neighbors actually have pyramids in those exact locations yes, on the do. surface. Yes, they do. And the Nile River is a part of this, too. The Nile River is a part of it. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, whoever made the Giza Plateau monuments put the Nile River there, but I am saying that they chose that site because the Nile River was there. The Nile, if you go back to a very particular moment, which is the spring equinox at dawn, in 10,500 BC, okay? What you find is that, of course, as always occurs on the equinox, the sun is rising perfectly due east, in line with the gaze of the Sphinx. Above the sun is the constellation of Leo, the celestial lion, the counterpart of the lion-bodied Sphinx, as above, so below. And at exactly the moment that the sun bisects the horizon, due south on the meridian lies the belt of Orion, sitting on the meridian and between the two we have the we have the milky way exactly mirrored by the nile river on the ground somebody so, was going around the world looking for a place where they could create a gigantic diagram that summarized the sky at that particular moment and that place was giza so the belt of Orion is just to the right of the Milky Way. If the, if the yes, Milky Way is like a vertical on the west line. bank of the Milky right. Way, as it stands on, the, as the pyramids stand on the west bank of the Nile. So the Nile River perfectly corresponds to this strip we call the Milky Way. Yes, in the sky. perfectly corresponds in 10,500 BC, at dawn on the spring equinox. And Leo is there on the horizon, yes. and the Sphinx is a lion. The Sphinx is a lion, and the Sphinx is looking at the constellation of Leo. And, and, and I and other researchers in this field believe that the Sphinx was originally not only a lion-bodied, but also a lion-headed monument. Mm. Uh, and that probably in the time of the pharaohs, they recarved the head of the Sphinx into the familiar human form that it has today. And we were in the age of Leo during the time that that original yes, alignment happened. Yes, because the character of the, of, of the astrological age is thought to be defined by the constellation that houses the sun on the equinox in any one time. We've been living for the last 2,000 and a bit years in the age of Pisces, because it's the fish, the constellation of Pisces, that the sun rises against the background of right. uh, in our epoch. And that's why we live in the dawning of the age of Aquarius, because Aquarius by precession is being shifted to house the sun and will house the sun for the next 2,000 plus years. Um, and that's why uh, if you go back before the time of Christ, you'll find that the predominant symbolism is to do with rams, because that was the age of Aries. Um, you know, rams are everywhere. The ram-headed sphinx is actually in the Temple of Karnak, for, for example. Go back further, it's the age of Taurus. Uh, everything is about bulls in that period, whether it's the Minotaur in, in Crete, uh, you know, whether it's the Apis bull in, in, in Egypt. You'd have to be yeah, astronomically... with the Tauroctony, where they're slaughtering the bull. Yes. You'd have to be astronomically illiterate, which the ancient Egyptians were certainly not, to build an equinoctial marker with the body of a lion in the age of Taurus. That's when the Sphinx is supposed to have been built, 2500 BC, smack in the middle of the age of Taurus. You're going to build an equinoctial marker in that epoch, you're going to build it in the form of a bull. But it's not in the form of a bull. It's in the form of a lion. And that speaks to the age of Leo. And the age of Leo is right back there in that mysterious window between 12,000 and 13,000 years ago, between right. 10,000 BC and 11,000 so BC. So let's just throw